Welcome to a lesson on limits at infinity. We sometimes need to determine limits when the inputs get larger and larger or smaller and smaller without bound. That is, when they approach positive infinity or negative infinity. Infinite limits tell us something about the end behavior of a function on an infinite interval. Infinite limits are expressed as the limit as x approaches infinity of f of x or the limit as x approaches negative infinity of f of x. And let's look at one of the most important theorems when determining limits at infinity. If r is a positive rational number, which is the exponent on x in the denominator, and c is any real number, which is in the numerator, then the limit as x approaches infinity of c divided by x to the power of r equals zero, and the limit as x approaches negative infinity of c divided by x to the power of r equals zero. And this is because the numerator is a constant and the denominator is increasing without bound or decreasing without bound, and therefore the function value approaches zero. As an example, let's consider f of x equals two divided by x cubed. First looking at the graph, as x approaches infinity, we're moving right along the graph, and we can see as we move to the right and approach positive infinity, the function values or y values approach zero. Similarly, if we move left along the graph, or as x approaches negative infinity, Again, the y values or function values approach zero. We can also take a look at this using a table, where for the first table, notice as x increases without bound, or as x approaches positive infinity, we can see the y values or function values again approach zero. Similarly, as x decreases without bound, or approaches a negative infinity, again, we can see the y values or function values approach zero. There's also a relationship between limits at infinity and horizontal asymptotes. The line y equals l is a horizontal asymptote of the graph of f of x if the limit as x approaches negative infinity or the limit as x approaches positive infinity is equal to l. As an example, if we look at the graph below, the limit as x approaches negative infinity of f of x is equal to negative two meaning as we move left along the graph, we can see the y values or function values approach negative two, and therefore we do have a horizontal asymptote of y equals negative two. Similarly, as x approaches positive infinity of f of x is equal to negative two because as we move right along the graph and approach positive infinity, once again, the y values or function values approach negative two. When determining limits at infinity of rational functions, the general guideline is to divide each term in the argument by the highest power of x in the denominator. And then we find the limit at infinity in the new form. However, we can also determine the limits at infinity using a graph, a table, as well as a shortcut method, which we'll now discuss. Again, the shortcut method only works when we have a limit at infinity of a rational function, meaning the numerator and denominator are polynomial functions. And if that's the case, we can determine the limit by analyzing the degree of the numerator and denominator. So for number one, if the degree of the denominator is greater than the degree of the numerator, then the limit of the rational function is zero. As an example, notice the degree of the denominator is three, which is higher than the degree of the numerator, and therefore the limit as x approaches infinity is equal to zero. And this is because the denominator is growing faster than the numerator. Number two, if the degree of the numerator is equal to the degree of the denominator, then the limit of the rational function is the ratio of the leading coefficients. As an example, notice below, the degree of the numerator and denominator are both three, so because the degrees are equal, the limit as x approaches infinity is equal to the ratio of the leading coefficients, which in this case is one divided by two or one half. And the third case is when the degree of the numerator is greater than the degree of the denominator. In this case, the limit of the rational function does not exist. Notice for both examples below, the degree of the numerator is greater than the degree of the denominator, which means the limit will either be positive infinity or negative infinity, both of which do not exist. We determine whether it's positive or negative infinity by paying close attention to the signs in the quotient. And now let's look at some examples. First, we have the limit as x approaches infinity of the quantity one divided by x plus three. Well, we know one divided by x approaches zero as x approaches infinity, and three is not affected by x, and therefore the limit is equal to three. Let's verify this graphically, looking at the graph below, 
As x approaches infinity, we move right along the graph, and we can see from the graph the y value or function values are approaching positive 3, and we also have a horizontal asymptote of y equals 3. And now let's look at some limits at infinity of rational functions. So first we have the limit as x approaches a negative infinity of the quantity 2x plus 5 divided by the quantity x minus 1. Let's first determine the limit using the general guidelines by dividing everything by the highest power of x in the denominator, which in this case is just x to the first, which means the limit is equal to the limit as x approaches a negative infinity of 2x divided by x plus 5 divided by x, all divided by x divided by x minus 1 divided by x. And now we simplify. Two x divided by x is two, plus five divided by x does not simplify. In the denominator, x divided by x is equal to one, minus one divided by x does not simplify. As x approaches negative infinity, five divided by x approaches zero, and so does one divided by x. Two and one are not affected by x, indicating the limit is equal to two divided by one, which is just two. We could have also used the shortcut method by analyzing the degree of the numerator and denominator. Notice in this case, the degree of the numerator is one, the degree of the denominator is one, and therefore the limit is equal to the ratio of the leading coefficients, which is two divided by one, or two. And also graphically, as x approaches a negative infinity, we move left along the graph. We can see as we move left, the y values or function values approach positive two, which also indicates we have a horizontal asymptote of y equals two. Next, we have the limit as x approaches infinity of the quantity three x squared minus five x divided by the quantity x cubed plus seven. Again, let's follow the general guidelines. Because the highest power of x in the denominator is x cubed, we divide everything by x cubed, which gives us the limit as x approaches infinity of three x squared divided by x cubed minus five x divided by x cubed, all divided by x cubed divided by x cubed plus seven divided by x cubed. Simplifying, three x squared divided by x cubed simplifies to three divided by x, minus five x divided by x cubed simplifies to five divided by x squared. In the denominator, x cubed divided by itself simplifies to one, and seven divided by x cubed does not simplify. As x approaches positive infinity, three divided by x approaches zero, and so does five divided by x squared. In the denominator, seven divided by x cubed approaches zero. One is not affected by x. The limit is equal to zero divided by one, which is equal to zero. Or again, using the shortcut method, the degree of the numerator is two, the degree of the denominator is three. Because the degree of the denominator is greater than the degree of the numerator, the limit is equal to zero because the denominator is increasing faster than the numerator. And then finally, analyzing the graph, as x approaches infinity, we move right along the graph. As they move right along the graph, it's not quite as obvious here, but the y values or function values are approaching zero. And for our last example, we have the limit as x approaches infinity of the quantity two x squared minus five x divided by four x. Again, using the general guideline, we divide every term by the highest power of x in the denominator, which is x to the first, which gives us the limit as x approaches infinity of two x squared divided by x minus five x divided by x, all divided by four x divided by x. Simplifying, we have the limit as x approaches infinity of 2x squared divided by x is equal to 2x minus 5x divided by x simplifies to five, all divided by 4x divided by x simplifies to four. As x approaches infinity, 2x approaches infinity, five and four are not affected by x, but because 2x approaches infinity, the limit approaches infinity, which indicates the limit does not exist. If we take a look at the graph, as x approaches infinity, 
we move right along the graph. As we move right along the graph, we can see the y values or function values increase without bound, verifying the limit approaches positive infinity, which again, because infinity is not a real number, we say the limit does not exist. I hope you found this helpful.